A disturbing and terrifying night for a Saratoga County couple with the sheriff's office accusing a Stillwater man of attempted sexual assault. Investigators say this man, 42-year-old Nicholas Lesson, is accused of sneaking into a home, scaling the wall outside, and climbing into a home through the second floor porch. They say he was nude at the time. Inside, he woke up the residents while attempting an assault on a sleeping woman According to authorities, she and her husband chased the man from the home. This according to the sheriff's office. Lesson was arrested at his home, charged with burglary and two counts of attempted sex abuse. Thank you. Peter. tonight we're tracking the one-time homeowner tax rebate credit checks that are being sent out to eligible New Yorkers. Governor Kathy Hochul announcing the perk just before the June primary election and the state's Department of Taxation and Finance says about two and a half billion people qualify. The department's website says you qualify if you meet three things. Your income was less than or equal to $250,000 for the 2020 income tax year. And if you qualify for a star and school tax relief, credit or exemption in your home. Many people have already cashed in on this, while others are still waiting for their check to show up. Investigative reporter Mary Keeler is working for you tonight, asking the state how they determine who gets one and when. Madison County Clerk Michael Kevill says his office and the treasurers upstairs are fielding lots of calls. Any calls today that you had to field? Lately, people are asking why they haven't seen their one-time homeowner tax rebate check in the mail from the state. My household received one of the checks. Our check arrived in early June. We live in the town of Sullivan. We live in the Chittenango School District. The Department of Taxation and Finance says delivery time is generally based on when you get your school tax bill, but beyond that, there's no system to track when your check will come. Even town assessors are getting concerned calls. Unfortunately, nobody at those levels of government have any idea why people haven't received their checks because it's a state program. Kevil got a call this week from a woman wondering why her neighbors got them and she didn't yet, so he called the state. When the response from the state tax department was, the checks are being mailed out randomly, 100,000 a week, there's no rhyme or reason, it's not alphabetical, it's not based on location, it's not based on the value of the rebate, it's completely random. My jaw dropped. <laughs> We checked that ourselves, and a spokesperson for the Taxation and Finance Department says there are still a couple hundred thousand checks to go out. If they're eligible and they haven't received it yet, they are just going to have to wait, but they shouldn't wait and worry. Yeah, that's exactly it. But others got it immediately, like Mark Campitello, to the tune of a little over $400. Neither my wife nor I knew that we were eligible for the check. It just kind of appeared in the mail. Uh, we opened it, smiled, uh, and cashed it. As for his neighbors... I guess be patient and wait, and hopefully you'll get it. Michael Kevill says he called us to help get the word out that it's not time to worry yet if you qualify for one of these checks. Just being able to know that it's being done with this random distribution should put people at ease and know that, hey, we don't need to call the local government, we don't need to call the county or the school district. It's out of their hands. I'm Mary Keeler reporting. Now, we should know rebate checks like this did come out during election years under former Governor Cuomo. And in 2020, we got pandemic relief checks from President Trump ahead of the election. We've got a link for you to check if you're eligible for a check from the state on our website. Right, we're getting a closer look at the possible reasons for an ongoing teacher shortage at the Syracuse City School District. Right now, there are 126 open positions with less than a month to go before the students return. The district now offering sign-on bonuses and other incentives. CBS 5's Connor White has this Crisis in the Classroom report. After dozens of his colleagues resigned, a Syracuse City High School teacher is preparing to head back to the classroom. If I got a, an offer to work in another district in the area, um, it would be a difficult decision, but I would likely take it. We spoke to him on the condition of anonymity after reaching out to find out what it's like to navigate the teacher shortage in Syracuse. It would be a hard decision to leave the district because I love the students. The teacher spoke about his individual experience in the school district, worried about retaliation if he were identified, describing a culture that he feels is pushing good teachers away from the city school district. There's just constantly this culture of stop speaking up, accept, accept things that are bad and do the best you can with what we have and stop trying to make things better, stop trying to, like, that's, that's the message, message I feel like I get from SCSD consistently. Like, well, it could be a lot worse, so shut the hell up and, and like, do your job. 
The district started the summer short over 300 teachers after losing staff to other districts and retirements. Typically, that number is closer to 150 to 200, according to the district. To me, someone has to do it. Sonia Bates is applying for special education positions. It's one of many specialty jobs that the school board identified as a challenge to fill. If they're leaving, where, where is they going to leave our kids? So I, I'm willing to try. I just love teaching children and watching them grow. Kirsten Lara Lavea is currently a teaching assistant in the district, also applying for a special education role. She says it's because she simply loves helping kids, which helps her overcome other challenges in the job. Maybe having a little bit more planning time for teachers and being more like aware of their mental health too. Syracuse teachers face unique challenges when compared to most other schools in central New York. U.S. Census data shows nearly half of all kids in the city live below the poverty line. It's one of the worst rates in the nation, with hunger, fatigue, and trauma impacting learning. In 2020, one out of every 10 people arrested for homicide in Syracuse was a teenager. That same FBI data counted teens as 13% of all homicide victims. A reality that doesn't stop at the school door. Teachers are the ones who, who are the front lines in, in, in supporting and helping those kids uh, survive on a day-to-day -day basis and, and get the education they need to, to, to move up and to, and to do something for themselves. This teacher worries that without more support from district leaders, more teachers are going to leave.